This is the reverse engineering demonstration for PowerShape 2013. This highlights the ability to capture point cloud data directly into PowerShape and should be shown with the accompanying PowerPoint slide and video where we show the scanning of the part and the point cloud data capture live inside PowerShape. If we click on the image from the rolling demo it will load the part into our window. We can then hide the browser and the tree window and we can see a pre-scanned point cloud or series of point clouds that we captured earlier. We have a series of levels with pre-created data to save us time during the demonstration and it's basically to save some of the repetition of some of the wireframe and surfacing options. So with our point cloud if we select any one of them it highlights the point cloud edit toolbar which means I can select individual point clouds and delete them and this is areas where we've had scatter or reflection during scanning or with the point cloud toolbar I can select individual point clouds blank everything else and then use the selection key to select individual points from that point cloud and delete those if we want to so we can do some edits to the point cloud when we're happy with it we can select all of the point clouds and go into the triangulation wizard so if I apply that what PowerShape is doing now is it's going to triangulate the point cloud based on the values that we've filled in here so it's going to add in a triangle for every three points based on this step over and it's going to ignore any holes that are larger than two millimeters Once it's triangulated we can hide the point cloud from view and we have a triangle mesh. When we select the triangle mesh it gives us access to all of our mesh edit toolbar. So the first thing I'm going to do is reverse that mesh and then we can use some of the tools on this toolbar to make some selections. So for example this area here we can select those triangles and delete them if we want to. If we had any large holes we could use the hole filling feature to fill in those holes based on a curvature or a planar cap and we could apply a general smooth to all of the mesh so smoothing tolerance of 0.1 apply that and we should see the whole mesh just gets smoother by this tolerance value now you can see we have some unconnected triangles so we can just split the mesh into its connected portions and then delete any of the smaller meshes that we don't require. So one of the first problems that you have with reverse engineering is that point cloud or scan data is rarely in any form of alignment and you'll notice that we have a work plane here that we've actually got nicely aligned to the model. So we're going to have a look at how we go about creating that work plane. So the first thing we want to do the first thing we want to do is create a work plane so we capture the correct Z direction of the model. So to do this I'm going to use some triangle tools, select this top planar region and then just reduce my selection. So I only get this top planar face of the model. I'm then going to divide the mesh based upon that selection. We can then select just the planar region of the triangles, open up the surfacing wizard and use that to create a plane of best fit based on those triangles. We can then reverse it and create a work plane with this same Z orientation or the normal direction of that plane. So we now have a work plane nicely aligned in Z and once we've done that I can just take all of the triangles and go into object, mesh and recombine them so they're one single mesh again. So we have a work plane in the correct Z orientation. But we also want to rotate around Z so we have the X and Y nicely aligned to something. So we can use our dynamic sectioning tools and come down Z and capture the model where we have some geometric form or prismatic form to the part. So capture the wireframe in that area. And I'm just going to hide the mesh for now and hide it on another level. 
I'm then going to reverse engineer or re-engineer two of the curves that we've captured. So one arc and one single straight line. And then delete the original curve. We can place a work plane in the centre of the arc, so we can snap to the centre. And then go into Modify, do a rotation around Z, and actually measure the angle that we want to rotate that by. So just do that again, capture a key point, another key point, and pick up the angle. Just going to come into the form again, capture that angle from the end to there, and rotate by that value. So if we redisplay the mesh now, we should see that we have a work plane nicely aligned, and it also matches our pre created work plane that we've got stored on another level. So I'm just going to select the wireframe and delete it. Now, looking at this part and thinking about the best way to reverse engineer it, we can see that we have two planar regions. So we want to create these two planar regions and then start looking at creating these pockets. We have two planes pre-created to identify the two planar regions. But to capture this pocket or this form, we'd want to start taking sections through the model. So we've already seen how we take those sections and I have a few pre-created sections stored on another level. So you can see the sections that we've taken through the model. Now what we'd want to do is start re-engineering those sections. So I could use some simple straight lines and just capturing points. And I could also use some arcs if I wanted to. So picking up the tangents and capturing radii in those corners. Now, if I just delete those curves, because we already have some pre-created reverse engineered curves stored on another level. And if I just compare those to the sections, you can see how they compare. Now the part is symmetrical, so what we're going to do is select that work plane and then use our limiting tool to just chop that wireframe in half. We can then select all of that wireframe and mirror it about the central axis. And then convert those into composite curves. Now we'll also notice that this large pocket region, if we view from the side, has a degree of taper in it. So again, we can measure that taper by simply inserting a line and looking at the values of the line. So we can see that the taper here is approximately 5 degrees. So with that in mind, we can bring back in our reverse engineered curves and use them to generate some surface extrusions. So we want to go minus 5 degrees to represent the taper and we want that to continue along that axis. So we can apply that and just do a straight wall here for this composite curve. So we have two surfaces and two planes. And the first thing we're going to want to do is just blank that and then use this to limit some of those surfaces. So what we can actually do is capture all of those surfaces and then generate a piece of wireframe at the intersection. So if I blank that, I can then use these pieces of wireframe to trim back those surfaces. So we can trim back that top one. We can select the curve, trim back the bottom one. And then also use it to limit the side wall piece. So as we have this basic outer shape, you can see how that meets with the triangles.
and we want to capture or reduce this down just to a square block. So we can create a simple solid block. So I have one pre-created on level 50. I can turn off the triangles, select all of the surfaces, just make sure the solid block's active, then select all of the surfaces and just do an intersection between that and the solid block. So we created the first piece or the first form to our model. So if we turn off the solid block, turn on the mesh, the next thing we want to do is create this pocket type region. So we have the pocket region pre-created. So we've created some surfaces that represent that pocket region. And what we could do is take all of those surfaces, convert them into a solid, make sure it's active, and then just add in a solid fillet along that bottom edge. So we now have two solids. I could take the original one that we made, take the one that represents the large pocket, and just remove that from the model. So we're starting to build up the basic shape of our model now. Next, if we look at the mesh, we can see we have this feature-rich area. But these could be basically be broken into five features. So we have a cylinder, we have a sphere, and then we have three features in the model. So again, to start recreating this, we would probably want to capture some more cross-sections through the model. So we have several cross-sections that we've pre-created. Now, hopefully, most of you can identify that creating the cylinder and the sphere is relatively simple. So we have a pre-created surface sphere and surface cylinder on another level. And we've just created those from re-engineering those pieces of wireframe. But what we would want to do is then look at start creating these features. So to create this back feature, for example, if I turn off the mesh, it would be a simple case of re-engineering some of the curves. So we have two curves on another level that we've re-engineered. So just two arcs, basically. And we can take those and convert that into a surface using the surfacing wizard. And if we turn back on our cylinder and sphere, we can see how those match the triangles. So as well as that we have these features in the triangle mesh that we want to recreate. So we could capture additional wireframe geometry and then use that to build the surfaces in those regions. So again I do have some surfaces pre-created for those regions. Now, as it's a symmetrical model, we could actually take those surfaces, just hide that one. We could actually take these surfaces, and if we look from above, we can select them and then mirror them about our central axis. So we have a surface model accurately represents that feature rich area. So again it would be a case of selecting all of those surfaces and then converting those into a solid model. Now we'd obviously want to add in a couple of fillets so we could come into our filleting tree and add in some fillets around these edges and around this top edge as well. Now to get the sizes of the fillets, if we just take a look at the third feature, we can see that we've actually just captured that fillet information by measuring it from the wireframe. So you can see how that wireframe matches with the fillets that we've created. If we return to our solid block, 
we then remove this cylinder from the solid block. So we have one that we've pre-created here. We've just removed the cylinder from the solid block and then added a few additional fillets in around the model. So it's approaching a sort of finished stage now when we can see how that compares with the triangles. We want to add some clamping slots and some transportation holes and so on into the side of the model. So I have some pre-created points stored on another level. I can make sure that solid is active. And then go into our solid features. And I could add a pocket onto the edge of the model. So we could just bring down the sizes of this pocket and take out the width. Apply that and then add in some holes for transportation. So we'll do a plain untoleranced hole of 6mm and apply that into the model. So we could do this around these four and then transfer the data across and do the same on the other side. So we have one that we've pre-created with the additional holes in. So the final stage of the demo would be passing this over to FeatureCam and this highlights another new feature of actually copying and pasting. Now just to make our alignment easier in FeatureCam we want to take this model and paste it to the world origin. So I can copy it with this work plane active, activate the world origin so just reactivate that work plane, make sure we copy the model, activate the world origin and then just paste that model to the world origin. And we can see there's the pasted example. We can just delete the original. We could then copy this from world and we'll have the ability to paste it directly into FeatureCam.